So let me start this video off by saying that there will be spoilers for the Book of Boba Fett, specifically speaking episodes 5 and 6. So if you haven't seen the Book of Boba Fett yet, you may want to click off this video now until you're a little more up to speed. However, I will say this, if you don't want to go through the entirety of the Book of Boba Fett, you can literally just watch episode 5 and 6, just those two episodes alone, and you will not miss out on much of anything in relation to the Boba Fett character himself. What do I mean by that? Well, you'll just have to trust my judgment and figure that out for yourself. Now, for those of y'all that know what's going on, strap in because we got some things to talk about. More specifically, what happened at the end of episode 6 of the Book of Boba Fett. That being said, everybody who has not watched the show has been warned. Here we go. So for starters, we get the return of the Jedi. Again. The return of Ahsoka. Again. The return of the Mandalorian. Again. And of course, the return of Baby Yoda. Again. So to give you some context surrounding these characters, episode 5 of the Book of Boba Fett had absolutely nothing to do with Boba Fett himself, and was entirely centered around the Mandalorian. In fact, it could have been titled The Mandalorian Season 3 Episode 1, in which the Mandalorian is reunited with the Armorer, who turns his best car spear that he got from Season 2 into this little mithril male armor for Baby Yoda, per the request of the Mandalorian. And yes, I'm aware that mithril isn't an element in the Star Wars universe, but it does remind me of what Frodo had back in Lord of the Rings, so you might hear me call it that by accident. Anyway, the armorer also discovers that the Mandalorian has taken his helmet off, and therefore he can no longer be considered a Mandalorian. And when asked what he can do to atone for this act of unfaithfulness, she tells him that he must go to the mines of Mandalore, in which a new adventure awaits him. But before he can do that, he has to get a new ship from that one redneck lady whose name escapes me on Tatooine, due to the fact that the Razor Crest got destroyed in Season 2. And it turns out his new ship is actually that one ship from all the way back in episode 1 that Anakin used to accidentally destroy a space station. So after it gets all fixed up, the Mandalorian sets out to go find Baby Yoda, who is training with Luke on this one planet, where Ahsoka Tano is there as well, watching from afar. Ahsoka greets the Mandalorian after he arrives on the planet, and while Mando wants to give the armor to Baby Yoda personally, Ahsoka convinces him to let her and Luke do it, since seeing the Mandalorian might compromise Grogu's Jedi studies, and so, reluctantly, the Mandalorian leaves the Beskar armor in Ahsoka's care, and then leaves. To which Ahsoka passes it on to Luke Skywalker, before leaving the planet herself. And so, after Grogu's training, Luke sits him down and presents him with the Mithril armor that the Mandalorian has given to him, but also presents him with a lightsaber, Yoda's lightsaber to be exact, and tells him that he can only choose one of these items, and that if he chooses the Beskar armor, he can go back to the Mandalorian and have fun little adventures with him. However, if he chooses the lightsaber, he will be the first student in Luke's new Jedi Academy, but he has to be committed to being a Jedi, meaning that he has to forsake any and all attachments that he has, including the one that he has with the Mandalorian. And that's basically the crux of this video. What will Grogu choose? And what does it mean for the future of Star Wars going forward? Now, a majority of people who are Star Wars fans, myself included, want the sequel trilogy to be erased. They want it to be completely obliterated with no chance of recovery. And a lot of people, myself included, were believing that considering the events at the end of The Mandalorian Season 2, Grogu was the new hope of Star Wars getting back on track and seeing the beginning of the decanonization process of the sequel trilogy. Because for those of y'all that remember, it was stated that Ben Solo was Luke Skywalker's first apprentice. However, by him taking Grogu at the end of The Mandalorian Season 2, that would have changed things quite a lot. And now with Grogu's choice of having to choose between being a Jedi or being a Mandalorian, it seems like they have another opportunity to segue back into the sequel trilogy era of Star Wars, depending on what Grogu chooses in this moment. And like I said, I do want the sequel trilogy to be effectively dead and in the ground, but I will have to say that the logical choice here would be for Grogu to choose the best car armor. While it would be cool to see Grogu choose the lightsaber and put a stake in the fact that the sequel trilogy is not canon, I feel like this is a case of what should happen versus what fans want to happen. And so Grogu will choose the best car armor and I believe he will do this for a number of reasons. First up, Grogu has survived and witnessed the grievous events of Order 66 as well as the Galactic Empire reigning over the galaxy for 20 plus years. So he may just be done with wanting to be a Jedi and just wants to do his own thing. Another thing too is that the bond between the Mandalorian and Grogu is too great for Grogu to just forsake 
considering the fact that this is the first person he's ever really connected with in literal decades. Whereas Luke is a guy he met like, what, maybe two weeks ago? So it only makes sense in that regard. Especially since Luke in this iteration is choosing to stick to the old Jedi ways of not having a Jedi form any attachments. There's also that little cockpit in the Mandalorian ship where the R2 unit usually stays in that looks like it would be a perfect place to put Baby Yoda should Baby Yoda choose the best car armor. It's a minor thing, but still. Also, I don't feel like Grogu staying with Luke would make much sense considering the fact that we won't ever really get to see much character development on Grogu's side considering the fact that Baby Yoda is 50 years old, but is still very much childlike, not only in appearance, but in personality. Like he gets distracted, he's hungry all the time, he gets into mischief, and I just don't see him becoming a wise Jedi Master in another 50 years considering how long Baby Yoda's species tends to live. Like these guys live for literal centuries. But even if we got like a Luke Skywalker show with Baby Yoda on there, he would still be playing the same role that he would be with the Mandalorian. That being that he'll pop in, be cute, use the force occasionally, and that's it. So why not just keep him with the Mandalorian if that is the case? Because to be honest, I feel like Luke can hold a show on his own, but I do not feel that the Mandalorian can do the same thing. But that's just me. So again, I do feel like Baby Yoda will choose the best car armor over the lightsaber. Alright, so now it's time for me to get real with you guys, like 110%. For even if Baby Yoda chooses the best car armor over Yoda's lightsaber, this doesn't necessarily mean that the sequel trilogy cannot be erased from canon. It simply means that Grogu will not be his first apprentice, and as long as Ben Solo isn't his first apprentice, then you can still have your cake and eat it too. Like if Luke goes on some journey and he just happens to stumble upon Ezra Bridger, for example, he can take him as an apprentice, thus changing the landscape of the sequel. Unfortunately, however, I do not see that being the case, and again, unfortunately, I do not feel like Disney is going to erase the sequel trilogy of Star Wars films, regardless of how abysmal they are. Because that would be the same thing as Disney and Lucasfilm apologizing for the sequels, and let's be honest here, the only reason they would apologize for anything is that they didn't include a disabled, transgender, black woman lesbian into their films. And while they will dance around the sequel trilogy of Star Wars, I don't feel like they're going to get rid of it entirely. After all, we see Luke in Episode 6 talking about how Jedi cannot have attachment to anything like that, similar to the old ways of the Jedi. Whereas in Legends continuity, Luke actually openly encouraged his students to form attachments with people due to the fact that that is what led his father, Darth Vader, to come back to the light side and become Anakin Skywalker once more, and it also led to Anakin Skywalker throwing Palpatine down the reactor shaft as a means to save his son. Luke also in Legends continuity has a wife named Mara Jade Skywalker, and they have a son named Ben. But here in the new canon, it seems like they're going to forsake all of that for having Luke stick more to George Lucas's original idea on what the Jedi should be. And this could just be a case of retconning like how certain things were retconned from episode 5 to episode 6. So yeah, unfortunately we may never see a live action depiction of Luke Skywalker having a family or anything like that. Now I know some people think that this might just be a test and Luke will let him pick both the Mithril armor and the lightsaber and have him go off with the Mandalorian for now but come back and continue his Jedi training when he's ready. Which may very well be the case. I simply have doubts that that is the case though. But hey, if you're right and I'm wrong, more power to you. Another reason why I don't believe that they're going to get rid of the sequel trilogy anytime soon is because every once in a while the sequel trilogy will rear its ugly head just for the sake of letting us know that yeah, it's still there. Like for example in the recent Vader comics, literally less than a year ago they were referencing all this shit from the Rise of Skywalker movie. From Exegol to the clone Snoke bodies to the Star Destroyers that could blow up a planet, etc. Keep in mind that these comics are supposed to be canon to the Star Wars myth. And up until that point, I don't think we had many references, or at least not any that were so brazenly put out there, that make a massive connection to the sequel trilogy. So unless we get some big event where the sequel trilogy still happens, but it happens in an entirely different way than what we saw in the films, all roads are still leading to The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and The Rise of Skywalker. And if that's the case, then they're just kind of dangling carrots in front of us, like showing us Luke Skywalker or Ahsoka Tano, for the sake of us watching their Star Wars content not for the sake of eliminating the sequels. It might be an enjoyable ride, sure, but much like Game of Thrones, it's gonna end up being a train wreck at the end of the day. But let me know what you guys think about Grogu's choice. Will he choose the best car armor or Yoda's old lightsaber? And will his choice have any real ramifications on Star Wars as it is now, or will everything stay the same? As always, support your emperor by leaving a like and clicking subscribe. Also, follow me on these social media platforms. You wouldn't
wouldn't want to commit treason, now, would you? 